this video I'm gonna break down why you probably should not be overpaying extra money for the brand new M2 MacBook Pro, but instead consider getting this MacBook Air M2 as well. And I won't be just talking about the obvious pros and cons, but also test its performance and see if it's good enough to replace my current laptop in the back. And hopefully this video will help you to make the right choice, so make sure to stick around. Now like most people, I don't upgrade my laptop every year. In fact, my current laptop is this 2017 i7 MacBook Pro and I use it literally every day, mainly for video and photo editing. For instance, last year I won an ASUS Pro Artist Awards with this video, which was edited on this very MacBook Pro. And even though it is still a very capable machine, I think it's time for me for an upgrade. And since my channel isn't big yet, I can't be just walking around buying every model of MacBook Pro there is. So I borrowed this MacBook Air M2 from my wife and she had it for some time now, but I actually never got to try it. And wow, turns out I'm long overdue for an upgrade. The model I have in this video starts at 1199 USD and comes with 8 gigabytes only of GPU memory and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. While some may be concerned about the low storage, I personally have not had any issues with it. because. I'm used to editing off of an SSD disk and all my current projects and media files are stored on this exact SSD disk so this way I can just open a project whenever I need to on different computers. Also as my work sometimes requires some traveling and commuting I was wondering if this MacBook Air M2 any good on the go as a portable media office. It might not be as powerful as the new Pro models but it's so compact and lightweight it makes it so easy to take it with me wherever I go. It's decent for photo editing and in emails or watching some YouTube videos though it does get warm a little after loading it with tasks. That's when my portable laptop stand comes in handy. I got it a long time ago, before I even had an external monitor. It was honestly the best thing for someone like me who spends working on a laptop for hours on end. And as a result, it reduces strain on your neck and shoulders. Plus, it helps to improve airflow around your laptop. Therefore, it does not get so hot. Then you pair it with portable external SSD disk and here you go, this is your office on the go. Battery life. So my wife uses this laptop mainly for browsing, the web, and emails and conference calls and she charges it every two to two and a half days. But when I started using it for heavy media work, like video editing, photo retouching and graphic design, the battery life drastically decreased and lasted for about four to five hours at most and it's with the relatively bright screen on. So as you see, the battery life will be greatly affected by the way you use this laptop. If it's just office work, wireless browsing, in this case, you will get way more battery life. And talking about wireless browsing, by the way, this is a very nice laptop to have at home because it's so lightweight, you just you just want to use it more. Unlike the bulky MacBook Pro, it's just, it's so easy to take with you everywhere. But what happens if I treat it as a MacBook Pro and throw some heavy tasks at it? Let's find out. Okay, welcome guys to the home office setup. Let me walk you through everything, how it works here. So MacBook Air M2, and it's connected via Type-C to this beautiful monitor. It's a 32 inch monitor. I use it for color grading, for editing, for pretty much everything. And why I love this setup, there's only two cables needed in order to make everything work. Power cable plugged into the monitor. And then there is another one Type-C that goes into the MacBook. And MacBook can transfer the image now and it also can be powered and charged. And you can also adjust the height of the monitor. It can go higher up like this, or if you have a standing desk, you can, you know, just make it stand like this. Now let's talk a little bit about MacBook. Now, I just had a minor problem with this laptop. You see, I already connected SSD disk and another port is being occupied with the Type-C from the monitor. So I have no way to transfer the extra files from the camera, so there is no Type-C connection on this side. So maybe this is something you have to keep in mind. It's not a problem if you're using the monitor like this. It has two extra USB connections on the bottom here. But if you're planning to use the laptop just as it is, without any monitors, keep in mind sometimes two ports is not enough. And let me transfer real quick the Final Cut Pro onto the bigger monitor, just so you see how good and convenient it is to have 32 inch monitor. Here I have all the files on the SSD disk. I can look at them at the same time as I'm editing. If I need something, I can just drag and drop. Okay, and now I'm gonna be using something against this MacBook Air, which probably is gonna stutter it a lot. I just wanna see how it performs if I throw a lot of 
film noise, if I put a lot of bloom effects, all this kind of stuff. I want to see if this laptop can handle it and if it's going to overheat or not. So, okay, I hit the play button and it stutters a little bit, but keeps on playing. My old laptop would crash completely at this point. And you see, I can skim through the timeline without problems. Wow. All right, now let's try something really crazy. I'm going to be playing YouTube video at the same time. So let's hit play in Final Cut Pro. It works, okay, which is already surprising because it's film emulation. And now this is the YouTube. I have not had this luxury, this much luxury ever. Oh my God, I'm editing the video with all the film simulation, color grades, and I'm playing YouTube videos at the same time in the highest quality and it does not stutter at all, it all works. Yeah, I heard a lot of complaints how people saying this laptop may not be the best option for people who edit videos, but I guess uh, I cannot agree with this. This is perfect for me. Sharing, okay, let's see how long it's gonna take. Everything works, this is the video. And this is a base model MacBook Air. Just so you see the comparison, this is my old MacBook Pro 15 inch. And this is the MacBook Air in comparison, so much lighter. You know, it feels like, this laptop feels like iPad, really. And this brings us to the things that I think are superior on the MacBook Pro and I don't really like in this laptop. The speakers on the MacBook Air M2 are not as good as the even MacBook Pro 2017. The audio quality feels a lot closer to the phone rather than a laptop. Hey guys, this is the next day. One thing I noticed, um, it has a little problems when you edit multi-layer clips. In this case, sometimes it can stutter pretty heavy, so you need to give it a pause and wait for it to think a little bit and then it catches up. So let me show you. Video frames dropped. So in that case, it's best to, when you play the clip, then just pause and then drag and drop something around. In that case, it does not stutter, it works really good. But I think this could be a problem because I'm using it with the external monitor. So stay tuned, I'll be testing it more. Additionally, the MacBook Pro offers more ports and even HDMI ports, which may be important for some users. However, for me, the MacBook Air M2 is the perfect media editing machine for traveling. Because it has no cooling system, it's so quiet when you use it, and it does not get even remotely as hot as my 2017 MacBook Pro. So I want to say that the performance from this laptop is very impressive, especially if you're like me, coming from five years old laptop with Intel-based chips, this is so much faster, it's incredible. I was just skimming through the timeline without any problems, using all the grain effects, film simulation. It handles so well the footage from the new Sony cameras, those compressed files that are really tough on a computer and overheat it in a second. Well, this one is just skims like butter, like it's nothing basically. I'm so impressed with this and I'm very happy that I got to try this laptop. And you know, I haven't felt this way in a very long time. I'm generally excited to begin editing on this laptop. So be sure to come back here and check out my future updates on my experience with this laptop, especially for those like me who have previously used older Intel MacBooks, even the Pro models. And in the meantime, do not forget to watch my latest video right here where I test out the phone cameras in the beautiful city of Pro. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.